Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, we're making the toilet play music because I'm slightly falling behind on projects. Brought to you by Patreon. This project should be relatively easy. We only need like a few components. First of all, we need an ESP32. Now you want to be sure to have the ESP32, not the ESP8266, because this one, even though they look very similar, does not have the same capabilities. The ESP32 has what's called a touch pin, which means when you touch it, it can sense capacitance. It's kind of like a button, but you only need one wire. A few other miscellaneous things. You need breadboards and some jumper wires. I don't know why I'm suddenly making this into a tutorial. I don't think you ever want to make this. Another thing you'll need is this copper strip. It's kind of like a flat wire with some adhesive at the back, so you can stick it down and solder things to it. It's great for projects like this. I'm gonna have to scavenge a couple things from my uh, work in progress pile. Specifically, I need this amplifier and speaker, and also uh, this One Day Future project has an audio board in it, which I'm going to repurpose for this project. Oh good, it's self-assembled. Now all we have to do is just plug it into power. This is just connected to my uh, desktop power supply. Now each one of these pins has a different sound effect corresponding to it, so if I pull it to ground, it plays that sound. It also has a couple different modes, for example there's latching mode, where after you trigger it, it plays the same sound on loop until you trigger it again, which is exactly what we're going to use today. I'm gonna make a small version of the touch sensor I intend to use. It's just a piece of copper tape on some cardboard with a wire soldered to it and plugged into the microcontroller. Right, everything's connected. I'm gonna plug it in and let's write some code. So first piece of test code is uh, going over the GPIO pins that are connected to the different sound effects. So if I run that, it should go over all of them. I've only got four GPI opens connected. I don't think I'm gonna need any more than that. Let's move on to the touch sensor. The touch sensor normally outputs a value around 500, but then when I put my finger on it, it goes down to around 80 or 70. I can then tell the code to only trigger when the number goes below 100, essentially turning it into a digital on and off. Now I want to program it so that when I sit down on the toilet seat, it plays soothing music for about 10 minutes, after which, it plays a uh, passive aggressive message telling me that I've been sitting for too long and I should probably get up. And after another 10 minutes, it sends me an even more passive aggressive message telling me to get off. Let's program it. So I wrote all the code. Now we just have to find out if it works. Fantastic, we've got that sound working. And theoretically, when I let go, Amazing. But that's not the only thing it's supposed to do. It does also have the persuasive messages to remove me from the loo. So if I keep my hand on there for a little bit longer, it should uh, deploy them. So that's message one. Get off the toilet. Get off the toilet. And that's message two. I did set the time delay to be 10 seconds instead of 10 minutes just for testing, but for deployment, it will be much longer, obviously. So the only thing left to do is to uh, attach a battery pack instead of the power supply and uh, attach it to my toilet. Theoretically, we have everything we need to set this up in the bathroom. To start with, we need to put our copper tape on the uh, inside of the lid. Don't worry, I have cleaned this. Copper is uh, self-sanitizing, as we've learned. Right, now I have to solder a wire to it. My soldering iron, fortunately, can run on LiPo battery. So first, I'm gonna tin this wire. Good enough. Okay, now that it's connected to the uh, toilet seat, we can plug it in. That's not supposed to happen. It took a little bit longer to set up than we expected, 
because the length of wire that you use for the capacitive touch sensor matters a lot. Um, if you go any longer than this, if you touch it, it sends the value down to lower than zero, which crashes the code. And there's no way of getting around that unless you use a different capacitive touch sensor. This is the maximum length of wire that we can have before it crashes when we touch it. And also, if I touch the radiator, when I touch it, it brings the value down to zero because the radiator is grounded, which crashes the code. So in order to properly use this toilet, you need to be isolated from ground. <laughs> Any electrical engineers are laughing their tits off right now. <laughs> but after a long while of setting it up, we finally have And it works. We did it. <laughs> this part of the project is finished after five hours. However, this isn't where the project finishes. There is a part two. You see, Alan Pan has this great idea for a toilet. And I decided that I will be the one person to actually make it. So, um, cut to my desk on the Safety Third podcast, Alan Pan has the idea of having two toilets. One of them really wants you to poop in it. The other one really doesn't want you to poop in it. But I only have one toilet, so I'm going to make it pull double duty. When you lift the seat, it's going to pick between whether it wants it or doesn't want it. First, we need to detect when the toilet seat is up. We're going to do this with... An IR sensor. An IR sensor is a very fancy sensor that shoots out invisible light from here and then it hits something and then it bounces back and goes into this guy and you can adjust at which point it detects something. I've got it set up relatively closely so that I can put it on the back of the toilet and then when the lid comes up it triggers it. Now that we've got it connected we can write some code for it. Right, all the code has been written. I should be able to just plug it into the toilet and it should work. The IR sensor, I've got some blue tack at the back and I made a little extension cord that should go right there so that it detects the lid opening. I'm going to plug in the touch sensor right there. I'm going to remove the adhesive on my breadboard. And now we can plug it in. First test, toilet seat app. Wow, what are you doing? No, 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 please. Please don't, please don't do it. No, please, I'm begging you, I'll do anything. Just don't shit in me, what do you want? Is it money? I'll give you and now let's pretend Just we sit down. Oh god, why? I begged you and you still did it. Why? Oh god, it's so disgusting. I'm disgusting. Don't look at me. Don't look. I'll make you pay for this. Oh god, it's in my mouth. It's in my mouth. Ah. I'd like to thank my friend Raging Noodle for writing the dialogue for the toilet. Um, let's see if we can get it to uh, say the other dialogue too. Wow, what are you doing? No. Nope, no, that's no, the no, same no, one. Please. Try again. Wow, what are you doing? Nope. The thing about randomness is that it's random. Wow, what are you doing? Nope. Come on, do it. You know you want to. I'm waiting here. Give it to me. I'm wide open. Drop it all over me. Make me dirty. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I'm your dirty little loo. Punish me. I want to feel your skin on me. Oh, God, yes. Do it. Make me filthy. The warmth fills me up. And don't stop now. Right there. Yes. God damn. Are you roasting chicken in me? That's a lot of piss. I love it. I'm going to call it that. Uh, there's a whole heap of cutout content from this episode. You can find it over on Patreon. Uh, Alan Pan, if you're watching this, uh, is this what you wanted? Because I will now be traumatized every time I try to use my toilet. Thank you very much. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> Just goodbye. <laughs>